In this episode, I share some more Oklahoma history with a little civics lesson thrown in. Let's talk about impeachment. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. It seems during every political season, the topic of impeachment just shows up. I guess this time it can't be helped in this era of strong political division. And with all the scandals and investigations surrounding our current sitting president, that doesn't help much either. (laughs) For me, though, the first thing that usually pops into my head when I hear someone say, impeach them, is what for? Just because you don't like someone in office means they've done anything that would prompt impeachment proceedings, or there's even the political will to make it happen. And my next thought would be, do you understand impeachment is not the removal from office? Well, because it's not. (laughs) I usually keep these thoughts to myself, though. (laughs) I don't have time or desire to get into a political argument at the office store or muttering to myself while sitting on the couch because some talking head said it on the news. Uh, Okay, maybe I do that last one. (laughs) On a federal level, impeachment just means formal charges are brought against the official of the government by the House of Representatives. It's similar to an indictment in criminal law. It does not mean the removal from office. It's the start of the process, but not the removal itself. After these charges are brought by the House, a trial is held in the Senate. It is the outcome of this trial that can lead to removal from office. Impeachment is found in Article 2, Section 4 of the U.S. Constitution. The President, Vice President, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. According to Wikipedia, the U.S. House of Representatives has initiated impeachment proceedings only 64 times since 1789. Only two U.S. presidents have ever been impeached, Andrew Johnson in 1868 and Bill Clinton in 1998. Neither were removed from office. Oh, a small historical side note. A lot of people do misremember this. (laughs) President Richard Nixon was never impeached. He resigned in 1974 before the full House could vote on it. The state of Oklahoma has a similar procedure for impeachment and removal from office. You'll find it in Article 8 in the state of Oklahoma's Constitution. Oh, and if you ever get a chance, please read through our state's Constitution. It's a unique read, to say the least. Anyway, to be impeached in Oklahoma, Article 8, Section 1 reads in part, The governor and other elective state officers, including the justices of the Supreme Court, shall be liable and subject to impeachment for willful neglect of duty, corruption in office, habitual drunkenness, incompetency, or any offense involving moral turpitude committed while in office. All elected state officers, including the justices of the Supreme Court and judges of the Court of Criminal Appeals, shall be automatically suspended from office upon being declared guilty of a felony by a court of competent jurisdiction. All right, now the rest of that section goes on about forfeiture of pay in which judge can sit on the trial. There are six sections under Article 8 all having to do with removal from office. I'll have links to all of this in the show notes if you want to read all about it. Oklahoma has only impeached two governors, and the history behind them is actually kind of interesting. (laughs) The first governor to be impeached and removed from office was Governor Jack C. Walton in 1923. John Calloway Jack Walton was the fifth governor of Oklahoma. He was inaugurated on January 9, 1923, and removed from office on November 19, 1923. 
In the years following the Tulsa race riot in 1921, a real deep scar in Oklahoma's history, the racist group known as the Ku Klux Klan grew in power in the state. In order to crack down on the Klan's activities, Governor Walton declared martial law in Omogi, Oklahoma, and Tulsa counties. He went a step further in Tulsa County by suspending the writ of habeas corpus, which is illegal in Oklahoma's constitution. Uh, the writ of habeas corpus is used to challenge the legality of someone's detention by police in court. Well, that didn't sit well with the state legislature and those in political power. And a whole mess of political and legal things happened. In October, the House voted to impeach him with 22 charges. And in November, the Senate convicted him of 11 of those charges, including the suspension of habeas corpus and general incompetence. Now, granted, I just gave you some of the highlights of that history. There is so much to the story of Governor Jack C. Walton, and I encourage you to go look into it. Now, the next governor to be impeached and removed from office was Governor Henry S. Johnson in 1929. Henry Simpson Johnson was the seventh governor of Oklahoma. He was inaugurated on January 10, 1927, and removed from office on March 21, 1929. To me, this one really stands out for a couple of reasons. One, the legislature tried to impeach him twice. On the second try, they succeeded, but it appears, well, to me anyways, as a political removal. The first time in 1927, there was a scandal with Governor Johnson's private secretary, Mamie Hammonds. She was acting as a gatekeeper and appeared to have more influence with the governor that many lawmakers just didn't like. <laughs> So they tried to impeach the governor for neglect of office. The problem here, the legislature tried to hold a special session for impeachment proceedings. Before they could even do that, they were blocked by the Oklahoma Supreme Court. You see, only the governor can call a special session. Okay, let's advance a few months to the end of 1928. It's a presidential election year. Governor Johnson puts his full support and campaigns for Democratic nominee Al Smith. Republican Hubert Hoover won in a landslide here in the state and swept in a near-Republican majority in the Oklahoma House, and they gained more seats in the Oklahoma Senate and Oklahoma Supreme Court. As soon as the state legislature met in regular session in 1929, both Democrats and Republicans brought forth new impeachment charges. On January 21st, the governor was suspended from office and in a six-week trial was removed from office for general incompetency on March 20th. Both Governors Walton and Johnson continued to have political careers after they were removed from office. <laughs> Jack Walton would later run for U.S. Senate and for governor again, and he was finally elected to the Oklahoma Corporation Commission. Henry Johnson would run and win a term in the Oklahoma State Senate. Well, there you have it. More information about impeachment and removal from office than you probably wanted to know. <laughs> if you would like to read up on Governors Walton and Johnson or just want to know more about removing someone from office, I'll have links to all of this in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. This week's Blog Oklahoma writing suggestion is to share your civics knowledge with your readers. If you're unsure about some element of your local, state, or national government, here's your opportunity to do a little research and write an interesting knowledge-building blog post. Are you someone who blogs in or about Oklahoma? Then you already qualify for WebRing membership. Join Blog Oklahoma today. Want to know more about Blog Oklahoma? Then just explore the web ring and discover some of the best blogs and podcasts in the nation. Visit blogoklahoma.com for more information. Okay, speaking of removing someone from office, there is one way you personally can help unseat them, and that is to go vote. If you don't bother to go vote, you get the government other people have picked for you. Your one vote does matter. It might not seem like it at times, but it's true. Many elections have been decided by one vote. 
A very important date in Oklahoma is coming up, and that is the June 26th primary election. Primary elections typically have low voter turnout, especially in non-presidential election years. This needs to change. This year, there will be a state question on the primary ballot. They purposefully put that question on this ballot because of the typical low voter turnout. So even if you don't have a primary to vote in, you still need to head to the polls on June 26th. If you're still not registered to vote yet, you have until June 1st. That's the deadline. If you're not registered to vote by then, then you can't vote in this primary election. Registering to vote in Oklahoma is very easy. You can pick up a registration form from your local library, post office, tag agency, or at the county elections board. You can even download the form from the Oklahoma State Elections Board's website at ok.gov elections. Just print it out, fill it out, mail it in, you're done. In a few days, you'll get a voter ID card in the mail. Here's the great thing about that voter ID card. It can be used as your ID when you go vote. That's right, if you don't have a driver's license, that little bit of paper can be used as your ID when you go vote. It's the law. Go register to vote. It's easy and only will take a moment of your time. Please visit ok.gov elections for more information. Well, we've had another successful refrigerator buffet month. Woohoo! <laughs> well, if you're new here, Every February, our family takes the opportunity to eat up any of the leftovers in the fridge or frozen meals that may have sunk to the bottom of our chest freezer. All while not going out to eat or going to the store for the month, except for, you know, any fresh items like milk. <laughs> not only does this help clean out the fridge and freezer, it saves us a little money during the, the short pay period of uh, February. <laughs> Very short. <laughs> and it's a good thing we did. <laughs> We've already done our taxes, and ouch, <laughs> that's an expense we weren't expecting. Pretty bad when there's a comma in the number you owe. <laughs> I, I laugh so I don't cry. <laughs> so, have you done your taxes yet? Now, don't get me wrong. I don't mind paying our taxes, even when we owe. Taxes pay for things like roads and teachers especially teachers. It's hard to believe Oklahoma ranks last in teacher pay, and they haven't had a raise in, what, 10 years? There are talks right now that the teachers might walk out on strike in April over this, and if they do, they have my support. Contact your state representatives and tell them to give those teachers a raise and to restore school funding. Remind them that this is an election year and you are going to go vote. Did you know we have our own Cafe Press store? There you can purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. So please head on over to cafepress.com slash blogoklahomapodcast. I've added even more great music to the Blog Oklahoma bonus playlist on Spotify. There is so much music there for you to enjoy. I'll have links to this and more in the show notes at Blog Oklahoma. Dot net. And thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma podcast. I'm happy to announce as of March 11th, 2018, Blog Oklahoma has... 722 registered Oklahoma bloggers. Hooray! Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time.